Dear diary, today my heart leapt when Agent Scully suggested spontaneous human combustion. The truth is here. Today we're going to take a look at the X-Files Classics Volume 1 and 2 by Stefan Petrusha, both with a cover price of $29.99, Volume 1 has a 224 page count and Volume 2 has a 200 page count. Let's get into these hardcover reviews. Alrighty, here we have the X-Files Classics Volume 1. You have artwork here on the cover from Sam Sheeran. Beautiful cover, man. I'm a huge X-Files fan. I kind of thought it would be fun to do a quick little review on both of these volumes that I have. Love the back of this hard cover here. This is actually from IDW Publishing. This was originally printed from Topps Comics, and they uh, they reprinted it in these hard covers here. I'm actually not sure if Topps had any other comics. I do remember just seeing these issues all the time back in the day when I was a kid, and I was a huge fan. I had a bunch of these in singles. So you do get a little uh, credit page here with everybody who worked on this book. So it's written by Stefan Petrus. Trusha. Then you have artwork from Charles Adlard. All the covers collected in this hardcover are from Mir and Kim, and they are just absolutely gorgeous. They all have these stylized covers with actual images of Mulder and Scully, who are of course David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. And they all kind of involve like the paranormal elements and extraterrestrial parts of the X-Files series. And it's just some really, really absolutely beautiful artwork. I actually just tracked down the issue number one. And I got it in a CGC 9.8 and a newsstand copy, which I'm super happy about to have in the collection because I really do love this series, whether it be these comics here or also just the television show. Like I said, it's one of the greatest TV shows of all time. My all-time top favorite. I don't think it gets any better, man. The X-Files were just so ahead of its time. And you can see shows that happen even today where they take definitely just straight from the X-Files and use it. I mean, like Black Mirror is a good example as well. We wouldn't have any Black Mirror if there was no X-Files, man. So definitely shout out to Chris Carter and everybody that was involved with this series and these comics are great man so the X-Files Classics Volume 1 is a graphic novel that collects the first nine issues of the original X-Files comic book series uh, the comic book series is set in the same universe basically as the uh, the TV show and features a good mix of characters that we all know and love from the TV show like Mulder and Scully obviously then you also get this group of characters that people they were like a fan favorite man people love the lone gunman as you can see here on the page they even had their own TV show show for a little bit too so uh you get the lone gunman popping up in here as i mentioned before these issues were written by stefan petrusha and they are illustrated by charles adlard and this uh this stuff was actually originally printed in 1995 by tops comics so it came a couple years after the x-files series came out i believe the x-files came out in 1992 so this graphic novel here starts out with a prologue that introduces the main characters the fbi agents fox Mulder, and dana scully the ogs of extraterrestrial and the paranormal activity so the prologue kind of sets the tone for the series, which is a blend of science fiction, horror, and mystery. The first story arc throughout it, titled Not To Be Opened Until Christmas, which is the, actually the issue that I just got with a graded copy of, which is so sick. Uh, that, that issue sees Mulder and Scully investigating a strange case involving a series of bizarre deaths that seem to be linked to a mysterious box. So it's very X-Files style. You get a ton of... Uh, it's it's really really similar to how the the show is i wouldn't say it's as good it's uh it's a pretty fairly decent read but i mean the x-files show is just so top notch that uh this doesn't compare to it but if you're an x-files fan you can definitely get into this and enjoy just the fact that you're being able to read these characters throughout a graphic novel so the not to be open until xmas story is engaging and pretty well written honestly with plenty of twists and turns to keep the reader guessing which is always good i mean that's a very big thing in the x-files they try to keep you guessing and you never know which kind of twist and turn is going to happen and those mysteries will continue throughout these issues the plots are pretty intricate and well paced with each issue kind of building on the previous one which is always good always love a continuous story that uh, creates a larger narrative so the artwork by Charles Adlard is pretty excellent in this with a moody and atmospheric style that perfectly captures the tone of the series I think he did a fantastic job throughout this kind of really immersing you in the same atmosphere that you would feel in the show so the second story arc in this is Firebird, and it's also equally impressive as the first story arc. The story sees Mulder and Scully investigating a series of murders that seem to be connected to, of course, a Russian military experiment from the 1950s. The story is suspenseful and thrilling with plenty of action and intrigue, and the artwork is really good to follow along with it. Love that black and white cover there. Then the third story arc, entitled 
Trempening Opera takes a different approach to this, which is a, a cool little change of pace throughout this graphic novel. This is this story is more character driven, focusing on the relationship between Mulder and Scully as they investigate a series of bizarre deaths that seem to be linked to an underground opera company. You gotta love just mysterious deaths. That's always a big, a high note in the, the X Files series. The story is kind of less action-packed than the previous two, but still manages to uh, be engaging and suspenseful throughout this. So all, all these issues, they're all like pretty good. And some, I'm on, it's not gonna blow your hair back. Like I said, the show is definitely better. But if you like this X Files uh, television show and you're a big fan, then these comics you'll definitely enjoy reading through these. And like overall, the X Files Classic Volume One is a must-read, obviously, for fans of the TV show or anyone who really enjoys like science fiction or horror or mystery or whatever. Uh, the writing is pretty good, the artwork is superb, and the stories are engaging well-paced, so I mean, it's a it's a pretty good graphic novel. Now let's check out Volume 2 of the X-Files Classics. This again has artwork from Sam Sheeran on the cover here, and you got the Smoking Man, one of the coolest characters in television history, in my opinion, man. I, I love that character of the Smoking Man. He assassinated JFK and all that, man. It's just uh, great stuff, man. I just absolutely love this show. I'm a, I'm a huge fucking fan of the X-Files. So you do get the title page again here with uh, Mulder and Scully there. You have a different writer on this as well. So you have Stefan Petrusha, and then you also have John Rosam. And it's still uh, artwork from Charles Adlard throughout this. With all the covers done by Mir and Kim, which are just phenomenal, as I said before. And this, uh, this volume here is going to collect issues 10 through 19 and the wizard half issue. So you're gonna get all that collected in this graphic novel. The issues collected in this graphic novel are gonna cover a range of stories that are both original, just like the previous volume, and also adapted from the uh, episodes of the TV show. So uh, the issues included in this volume cover a variety of themes throughout, which are the basic X-Files themes, obviously, including the government conspiracies, aliens, and paranormal phenomena, which is, what we all know and love from X-Files stories. In this volume, we again follow the adventures of FBI agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully as they investigate a variety of supernatural and extraterrestrial phenomena, my favorite kind of phenomena. The stories are presented in chronological order and include a mix of standalone cases and overarching storylines that are part of the larger mythology of the X-Files universe, which is always good to kind of have that whole universe brought to the pages here. One of the strengths of the X-Files Classics Volume 2 is its ability to capture the tone and atmosphere of the TV show, similar to the first volume as well. I think both of these volumes have a good, uh, a good way of doing that. These stories are creepy and suspenseful. They all give you plenty of X-Files vibes. And I think this volume definitely stands apart from the first volume as the dialogue between Mulder and Scully is also pretty spot on, capturing the wit and the banter that made the characters so endearing on the television series. And I guess apparently that Gillian Anderson and David Duchovny were not fans of each other, which is uh, kind of shocking to me, honestly, because they were just, they had such a good connection and relationship on the show. It was really a, I just found that out recently i was like wow i can't believe that they were uh, not fans of each other it's uh pretty absurd that they do, do not see that on camera at all but uh moving on through this book we are coming up on issue 13 of the x files here that is included in the x files classics now this is probably another one of my favorite issues throughout this book this one has some really really strong artwork this story is called one player only and as you can see here just absolutely gorgeous artwork i kind of would have preferred if they had that similar art style throughout the book that's uh, kind of uh, very similar to what the, the, the covers are actually for Mir and Kim. If the art style was like that throughout all these issues, I think I would have liked that a lot more than this other style that Charlie Adlard had. I mean, it's good, but it kind of has that cartoonish feel to it. I think if it was a little bit more dark and gritty, kind of like how the artwork is throughout that issue, it would have been a lot better for telling these stories from the X-Files. It just suits that style and atmosphere the X-Files has. So unfortunately, that's not what it is, but you do get that beautiful artwork in issue 13. Definitely one of the more standout issues included in this graphic novel and I really enjoyed reading it. Some of the stories in this volume are definitely hit or miss but I would have to say that one of the ones that sticks out for sure is uh, Thin Air. It's a super clean X-Files story. One of the probably most entertaining stories that's in this volume. It definitely has like the, the regular formula that you would expect in like an X-Files episode. I mean it has aliens, it has men in black, it's got 
some very nor very uh, paranormal activity type extraterrestrial situations happening throughout it, which is enjoyable and definitely uh, stands out, I would say, as the best uh, story that is included in this graphic novel. Now, if you're looking to pick up a graphic novel, I get all my books from OrganicPriceBooks.com, the best place to get your omnibus and other collected editions. Super fast shipping, bulletproof packaging, and amazing customer service. Use promo code DROCK to get $2 off your purchase at OrganicPriceBooks.com. And now use code DROCK, ship it together to get 5% off a purchase of three or more books from OrganicPriceBooks.com. Join the OPB family today. Link is down in the description. I will just mention quick that these books are long out of print, unfortunately, so you won't be able to pick up these books from OrganicPriceBooks.com, but uh, you can, if you search around, you can find them. Here's that Thin Air story, which is probably the strongest story in this graphic novel, and probably out of the two, it's the best. So, uh, overall, the X-Files Classics Volume 2 is really an excellent addition to uh, the X-Files canon, so it really builds on that and adds to it. Uh, it captures the spirit of the TV show, I feel, pretty well while also offering up some new and exciting stories for fans to enjoy, because I'm a huge X-Files fan. I can't get enough. I was very happy when they did the uh, the reboot, the recent reboot of the series, bringing back David Duchovny and uh, Gillian Anderson. They brought back Mitch Pileggi as Skinner. I can't remember. I think they brought back Krychek, possibly, too. So, like, a bunch of characters they brought back in that series. It wasn't as good as the original. We all know that seasons one through seven are the OG best seasons of all time. I would even say probably one through five are the best. I'll say these stories don't compare to the television series, but, I mean, it's really hard to come close because those are just so damn good but i mean the artwork is top notch in these the writing is pretty engaging and suspenseful and if you're a fan of the x files i mean this graphic novel is a must read both of these volumes volume one and two i think there's four volumes all together i personally really enjoy both of these volumes let me know what you think about x files classics down in the comments below and as always stay spooky